Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW repairs and information. Well this is all about fitting LEDs in, in, in the indicators and not having them hyper flash. All started with a post from Clockwork on BIMTheForums.com where he asked where we can, whether we can get a special relay for the car which wouldn't cause hyper flashing with LEDs. And certainly it could be, it's a horrible looking thing with this sort of loom and a lamp and just not suitable. So I said on the forum, we could probably modify the relay. And regurgitating a few posts, Revta joined in and said, yeah, it can be done. But just got to remove the sense pin from the shunt resistor, the bit that measures the current in the lamps, because it's the current in the lamps that determines the speed of the flash. With tungsten bulbs, the current's a lot higher and it will flash normally. Fit LEDs, the current reduces past the threshold point and then it will hyper flash. So if we remove this trace that goes to the shunt resistor, so it ignores whatever current, in fact, that's the problem. Even if you've got no lamps working, it will still flash at the normal speed. Yeah, if we remove the trace and then join it so it doesn't all float around, Bob's your uncle. So yeah, this is what this video is all about. And I'll go through all the tools you need, how to do it, we'll stick the relay on the bench and join wires and stuff and I'll show you which LEDs to use as well. I've already done it to this car and it works fine. So yeah, anyway, let's get on with it. Right, before we start chopping into relays and things, I thought I'd show you the LEDs that I'm going to use. These ones are e excellent. I get them from Amazon and I've used them quite a few times. The, these are the ones that I use in the FTPs in the double version. This is the single version, so Bay, S rather than bay D. Um, they've got LEDs at the front, four of them, very bright, whole bunch around the outside and it's metal case. Then you need a metal case because well tungsten bulbs radiate heat in infrared, bungs out all the heat from them. LEDs don't so you have to dissipate the heat some other way and of course it goes into the body of the LED enclosure which in this case is metal. So that's quite likely to survive, which is why I use them in my FTPs, uh, because you can just keep them on all the time. They don't uh, overheat. Now for the indicators, we'll use for, for the front and the back. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to use for the side indicators yet. I haven't even looked to see what type of bulb is in there. Um, so yeah, I'll have to get around that to that at some point. If they're a wedge-shaped uh, bulb, then you're all pretty much on a hiding to nothing because of course the wedge ones don't have any body and they can't dissipate any heat so it might be better to keep the tungsten bulb in there but there you go anyway these are very bright i've got 12 volt source there set to 12 volts rotten old pair of leads uh, which probably proved my undoing but there you go 12 volts 0.53 amps so yeah, 6.2 watts, and they are exceptionally bright. Yeah, in the indicators, they, you're going to notice them, that's for sure. So I'll put the link up for that in the description. And if the, the link doesn't work where you are, in different parts of the world, then look for them because they look like this. They have four LEDs at the front, bunch around the side, metal bodied, very important, get a metal body one or they fail quite quickly. Right, let's get on with it. There we go, that's a bit better. So yep, yeah, E-Box, here's the fella just here. They're usually in quite tight if they've been here a while. Ah, there's a little grabber for those, I think, somewhere. It grabs onto the top, I ought to find that. Okay, so there's our relay, that's the floor. Two screwdrivers is the easiest way to do it. There's one there, so we'll put a screw, I'm gonna slightly zoom in. Yeah. Put a screwdriver in and leave it in. We need a second screwdriver, put in the other side. Can do these with do this with trim tools, but there you go. As soon as you put the second screwdriver in, the first screwdriver shoots out. Yeah, an interesting little IC, uh, uh, PCB, isn't it, really? Yeah, if you're going to get solder fatigue on any of the joints, it will be these ones here 
all the ones that connect to the relays. Yeah, it's always the same with the early BMW stuff. The relays are reasonably heavy and sitting on a PCB. And of course, the vibration gets to them eventually. And then you end up with dry solder joints around here. Right, yeah, well, that's what's inside a flash unit. Just the same, same as Rev to show. M-shaped shunt resistor, two relays, one for left and one for right indicators. Not much on that side at all. So a single-sided PCB. And there's the IC that we were discussing. Um, it's got, to, to identify which way round an IC is, it either has a little dot by pin one, or it has a chamfer. And this one's got a chamfer. And the pin number's always the same. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is the one we're going to lift up or disconnect. And that's eight. And that is pin one. We need to join that to pin seven um, to stop it floating around. Okie dokie. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to put some standard solder on it because it will be soldered with a higher melting point solder. And that just makes life too easy. Um, so what we're going to use is some flux. So I'm using Circuit Works Tacky Flux. Best flux you can get. And I'll use that to put a bit more solder on everything. It's not easy trying to do it through a phone, to be honest. All right, a bit more solder on pin one. A bit more solder on pin seven. And what we'll do now is we can lift up pin seven. We just do that by putting the soldering iron under here. Heat up pin seven and just lift it up. There we go, and just make absolutely sure when you've done that it's not joined anymore. Yeah, that's disconnected. That's good. So that's pin seven disconnected. I much prefer doing that to cutting tracks. I mean, if something goes horribly wrong, then I can always change the IC. You can still get them. You can get them on eBay for about 12 quid. Righty a bit of wire. This is Kynar wire, which is um, tin copper wire with a green insulator. So I just peel back a bit of the insulator. Now, this isn't going to be easy looking through a phone, but I'll give it a go. If I can zoom in a bit more. Oh, yeah, that's better. So, yeah, I can try and do it through the phone. It's not going to be easy. Right, a bit more solder on pin one, I think. There we go. Surely good. Get my kyna. Right, yeah, let's join that on. No, it's just a lot harder through a phone than seeing it in real life. There we go, that's joined to pin one. And just bend it over to pin seven and join it there. Missed. I don't want to push too hard on pin seven, of course, because that will bend it and eventually it'll just fatigue and fall off. A bit more solder. I ain't got it that time. Okay. So yeah, that is joined on. Snip him off there. Yeah, it's easier to have the uh, hold the wire, kind of wire, rather than a snipper length, um, because that just makes it nigh on impossible. Right, there's a close look at pin one. I'm not entirely happy with that, because I can't really see what I'm doing, but I'll give it a bit more blob of solder, I think. Through a camera, very difficult. Right, there we go. Right, the next thing I want to do is make sure that pin seven is disconnected from the trace underneath, and I'll use a meter for that. Right, let's have a go. Should be able to see what I'm doing in the camera. 
Right, so that's connected to the trace. Oh uh, yeah, no connection, and then to pin seven. Connection to the trace, no connection. Triple check by going on to pin one and making sure it's not connected to the shunt resistor. That's good, that's that done then. Pretty easy. Okay, if you want to do it without lifting legs and putting tiny bits of wire across, then I'd recommend doing a cut in the sole in the trace at this point here. Now Rev has done a diagram of this model and it shows the track going out from underneath the IC, underneath this resistor, and then up to the shunt resistor. So if you actually cut it just where it joins the shunt resistor, make sure it is disconnected with a meter. Scrape off the solder resist on the trace that you've just cut below it and then scrape off the solder resist on this track, the outer one, which is 0 volts. Tin, tin and then join it across with a bit of wire and that will do exactly the same thing as lifting pin 7 and joining it to pin 1. So there you go, that's the easier way of doing it, cutting and joining tracks together. Right, well, before we test, I will say that I have changed the value of the capacitor that sets the speed of the indicators. It uh, From the factory, it has 2U2, which is that fella there, and he used to be sitting there. And I've replaced that with uh, 2U2 plus 2.47s and making it 3.14 microfarads. That slows it down to a speed I like. Modification does work, but you can keep a 2U2 in there. Um, so with the mod, it went the right speed, but as I say, I've always thought the indicators on the BMWs go a bit too fast. So we can connect electricity to it. So I've got 12 volts coming in on pin six, naught volts on pin eight. I'll switch that on. Get it up to 12 volts, make sure nothing's going to catch fire. Righty out, should we should be able to join pin 6 to pin 7. And pin 6 to pin 2. That's perfect, that's exactly the speed I wanted. Put him back in his case. There's runners, so there's a runner there. And a runner there so that goes that way round squash him in squash those in that's it ready to go back in the car right we're back at the e-box right, check which way round it goes Right, he's in place. So confident I'm going to close the lid. Right, let's start with this side at the front. The rears are a lot easier. Right, work from the inside first. Get that going. That's it. Ease out. Bit of lubrication for the two screws. They always get rusted in there. So I'll work some lubrication into it. Ease out. That one's a bit tighter, so we'll get the old lubrication in there. There we go, ease out. Right, I'll plop him out. There we go. Oh, I should have got a bulb out ready. Go. So this is a six watt LED bulb, quite a nice one, throw out a lot of light from the front, which is what we're interested in. Okay, plop him out onto my leg. Check you can see everything. Yeah, just about see everything there. Clockwise on the left hand side light. He's out, so it's a single filament tungsten bulb, and in goes a single filament, if you like, 
LED bulb. These in. Clockwise to lock it. Should clear up in there really, it's a bit of a mess. Side stalks in first and make sure there's no pressure on this. If there is any pressure, just pull it out a bit further. Try again, that's it. All right, let's check, see if that works. Right, into the boot. So that's, where is it? So it's on the right here, isn't it? Yep, that's the one. righty I hate taking the right hand cover up. It never actually goes back in properly. I should be able to get my hand in there. So another tungsten bulb out, another LED in. There we go. Fiddle about for five minutes, trying to get it back in the hole. There we go, it's clicked into place. Let's move the camera around. Right, there we go. LED fitted to the left hand side, tungsten on the right relay fitted back in and with a slightly slower flash as well so i prefer it this speed this is just right it was a bit manic before okay and you can see the difference between an led and a tungsten bulb the tungsten sort of glows up and glows back down whereas the led is very digital and it's quite a lot brighter certainly in real life yeah you can see it on the camera as well Side ones, I suppose I've got to get an LED for the side one now. I haven't ever changed one of those, so I'll best look out what sort it is. I'm guessing it's a 5 watt. Yeah, it'd be interesting to find out that, see if you can get wedge ones. They're okay. The wedge ones are all right for this sort of application for an indicator, because they're not on all the time. Can't use a wedge one for any length of time, because they overheat. Righty-o, the rear ones. You saw me swapping out the tungsten for an LED on the right hand side. I only had a tungsten uh, one in because the LED had failed and the left hand side's always had an LED in. That one's lasted a bit longer but I will change them all the same. So there we go then. Yeah I much prefer this speed of flashing. It was a bit too fast before. Right there we go then. All done. Yep yeah, um Lifting pins on ICs isn't for the faint-hearted, that's for sure. Um, but I prefer it to cutting tracks. I really do hate cutting tracks. It just reminds me of 30 or 40 years ago, cutting tracks with a sawn-off hacksaw blade. <laughs> it wasn't pleasant. And also, just lifting a leg means if things didn't work out, I could have just plonked it back down again. And no one had been any the wiser. And if I broke the IC, I could always unsolder it, stick another one in. Anyway, I've only done the right hand side, um, run out of LEDs. Right hand side flashes away the same, si uh, same speed as the left hand side, which still got tungsten in there. So the mod obviously works fine, no problem with that. Thanks very much to Revda for that. Yeah, so there we go, LEDs as indicators. Yeah, I've always run uh, LEDs in the rear of the car, by the way. You can get away with changing one of the tungsten bulbs to LEDs but not two of them. Um, once you get change two of them then the current demand is below the threshold of that IC and then it will start doing fast flashing. Anyway both front and back are now LEDs and flashing the same side as the tungsten so yeah works no problem at all. So thanks very much for watching, thanks for subscribing, thanks to Revter for his writing it all up and thanks for, oh, I can't remember, was it Peter J who said, initially asked whether we could change the relay. Yeah, well, it got me thinking. Anyway, there we go. Put a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.